I used to man the information desk in the center of the great hall of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Bullseye of that octagon was an immense urn of flowers arranged in silence by florists on multiple ladders each Monday when the museum was closed, reminding us that art is mourning. Information Desk and Epic is a book-length poem about my experience staffing the Information Desk at the Metropolitan Museum of Art when I was a young adult. Shortly after college, I was trying to forge a life as a writer, and I was a poet, and I wanted to find a day job that would sustain my practice, or at least not get in the way. I used to come to the Met very often. Like, I think like a lot of people, it was a sort of holy place for me. So I thought, what can I do where I can go to the Met every day? What kind of job can I pursue? They told me about the position at the information desk. So that's what I did, and it was an incredibly good fit. The information desk is the central hub in the middle of the Great Hall, and it is the first interaction when somebody comes into the museum asking for something. The easiest way is it was really at the crossroads of art historian, which I was not, a representative of the city of New York, which I was not, interlocutor of the Western world, which I was not, and customer service rep, right, <laughs> which I think I was. And so the day begins. A guard unlocks a row of doors, crowds enter, and I am information, not so much behind as within the desk, a property of the fact of the collection, and catechism commences. Where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? Can you direct me to the men's room, to the Elgin marbles? Is there a bag check? Who's your daddy? Are those your real breasts? Why is there an entry fee? What is a suggestion? Am I not a taxpayer? Where's the bathroom? A payer of state and city taxes? Am I not a slayer of men, same as Napoleon, who stole the needle erected just behind us called Cleopatra's, a misnomer and obtained diplomatically in the city's public grass? One just like it sits in the path Marie Antoinette was led down to be beheaded. Wayfaring is what we call moving visitors through the building. It turned out that working at the Met sort of defined me as a poet. I learned everything I know about syntax by telling people how to get from point A to point B, C, D, E, and F. Something about the time travel of telling somebody, you're gonna go through ancient Egypt and you're gonna find yourself at a temple and then you're gonna turn into the American wing and then you'll make your way back to the medieval court. I realized I could just keep going and it was sort of pinging through all of this major art and that this could make its way into the form of a poem. Confession. Yesterday I slipped a piece of my hair into an archival file of information about the Rembrandt, not Rembrandt exhibition I requested from the museum library. I wanted to be a bigger part of it than just the girl who gave directions, but now I have misgivings. I've been writing poems about my experience in the museum from the moment that I sat down inside that desk. I was finding my material, or it was finding me. I never felt like I needed to search for anything here. I felt called to. Portrait of a man, the auctioneer. Across the brow of the murky reproduction of the original, authentic, fraudulent painting by an artist only known now as follower of Rembrandt. Some curator's assistant's assistant identified the internal department of origin by scrawling European paintings on the only place bright enough to use a ballpoint pen in all that shadow. I think time is a factor in the poem too. The swirl of what we mean by eternity needed to be present. Should I be true to how I felt in my 20s or should I be true to the now of the writing. If I was writing about artwork, how should I be true to its time frame? There is the now of the artist who's making it, and then there's the now of the person who is looking at it, who's coming from a life lived that the artist never accounted for. 
if it's you know painted on wood, do I mean the time that Rembrandt sat down to paint it, or do I mean the life of the wooden panel? Like, what does it mean to be made? When does something come into its materiality? And then these started to seem like very spiritual questions. My coming of age as an artist was inextricable from my intimate experience working in that museum among its gorgeous harrowing horde that collides in time and space where magic and mundane objects with and without auras awed me on my way to see portraits of heiresses whose families bought and sold the world. I can't imagine the poet I would be if I hadn't worked at the information desk. Though I haven't worked inside the information desk now for more than 20 years, the experience has so asserted itself into my art that I regard the information desk as my private writing desk. I am always seated there. <laughs>